Richard, yeah. not to, sorry, not to cut you off. Are you recording? Oh, it is. Sorry. Uh -huh. I apologize. Yeah. I, I saw the little thing pop up. Yeah. Am I good? Yeah, I apologize. Sorry. No, that's okay, Sean. Um, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18. This meeting of the Amherst Town Board of Assessors is being conducted via remote participation. Um, and uh, uh, so, so uh, Lee, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. And Ken, Ken has just stepped away. I, I actually have to go through the formality of Ken. Ken Hargreaves, are you here and can you hear me? He, he okay. just waved. <clears throat> waved, okay. Um, and uh, Elizabeth Duffy? I don't see her yet. Yeah, she is not in yet. I will be right back and just go see what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> Teresa, um, you can hear us, right? She's got a mic on, but not her camera. Thank you for being the host, Lee. Oh, no problem. This always seems to have a problem. I wonder why that. Okay, I've just received the email for the executive session. Okay, good. Okay. So we know that it's out there and available. Next Thursday, a week from now, I'm helping to run a webinar having to do with the new Massachusetts, uh, uh, what's the formal title? Hold on. Massachusetts uh, Justice, Equity, and Accountability in Law Enforcement Act. Ah. And uh, we've got uh, Senator Lesser, Rep Representative Williams, you know, Bud Williams? Yes. Sheriff uh, Stephen Tompkins, who's the Suffolk County Sheriff Department. He's also uh, president of Noble. Okay. And uh, Chief Michael Wynn, Pittsfield Police Department, who's also on the, on the, just appointed to the committee that has to do with training going forward. Yeah. What time is that on Thursday next week? Uh, starts at six thirty. If you're That's interested, I'll send you the link. Is that open to the public? Yes. Okay. If you're interested, you have to register so I can send you the link. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really comprehensive law. <laughs> it's this, gonna. This, this is the new law. The new law. Yeah. Uh, regarding police training not only police training uh, well all the different things that are current right now you know okay. uh, and i uh, believe the governor signed on this law right he signed on this is uh, december 30th last year yeah okay so it's law but implementation is another question sure <laughs> well come on liz Gentlemen, I'm sorry about this. Lee, do you have some, uh, Lee and Ken, do you have some time constraints today? Um, I certainly would like to be off saying by 12, if we can do it, but at this rate, we're not doing too well. We're not doing too well, no. In fact, I think I'm gonna, well, I guess I have to leave it, since you called it to order, I have to leave it recording. Yes. <clears throat> Ken, you were really interested in, in, and I'm glad you asked the questions about the solar. Uh, yeah, I was, I was simply trying to get an overview. So Liz is um, still trying to get in. We're calling IT to see what's going on. 
It's given her a little bit of a. Can we take this off record right now? Because we're we're just waiting. We're kind we of waiting. can, I guess. Is there are there any agenda items that you can do that you don't need Liz for? I don't know if you need to review I, minutes or anything like that. Actually, I think you're right. I, good point. Um, let me let me um, finish mm. by reminding people the meeting is being recorded to the web and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast on the Hound of Amherst YouTube channel. And now I call the meeting to order. Um, um, and um, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask everybody to um, to mute when they're not talking, except for me, of course, I'll, I'll, since I'm chairing. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the, are the minutes of the April 26th meeting. Gentlemen, have you had a chance to review those minutes? Yes. Do you have any um, additions or corrections to make on those minutes? No. No. Um, I move that we approve the minutes of the April 26, 2021 Board of Assessors meeting. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. And now um, we are moving to, um, oh shoot, I put, I put my agenda away. Oh. <clears throat> I have written down the agenda. Here it is. Okay. Um, when Liz has joined us, we're going to deal with um, uh, two sets of motor vehicle abatements. So, Rich, the other thing we could um, do is um, do the residential exemption item if you'd like to keep moving. Um, I was going to lead that discussion, okay. I think, anyway. Let's go to that. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, do you mind if I, let's see if I have the ability to. Um, I was going to share my screen and pull up okay. just the outline of um, the different tasks. So, pull that up. And is this an item that we can get, uh, whatever you show us, could we get sent to us too? Yeah, yeah, I, I emailed this to you once already in a little bit different format, but I'll email this to you um, uh, after can this. Me, can you hear me? Yes, Teresa. It's Teresa. Yeah, we can hear you. And we see Liz now. Or we see Liz's um, Hello. icon. So we can hear them, but they can't hear us. But um, so I'll keep going and we'll see. Hey. Liz, hi, Liz. Can you hear us? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so sorry. I think I'm possessed by the technical devils. Um, but we are in. Um, I think I'm in as a, a as a attendee. Correct. You're a panelist. Okay. I cannot okay. hear you, Lee. You're not unmuted. Yeah, no. there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And Ken, you're not unmuted as well. Just an FYI. Okay, so we've, we've, we've yeah. approved the minutes of the last meeting and we've skipped ahead to Sean's uh, discussion about the residential. Okay, okay. And this is all go recorded. Ahead. So I'll get the time lock on that. Okay. Uh, can, you, can you all see on the screen the, um, the list I have? Yeah, just to uh, magnify just a little bit more. A little bit more? Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? That's good. Okay. Um, so I sent you a while ago, sort of our um, next steps. I sat with Paul and, and talked with Liz about um, how we want to approach the residential exemption study. And so this, these are some of the items that we discussed and that I wanted to review with you to get your input on before we sort of finalize a plan moving forward. Um, so this includes the survey, but it goes beyond just the survey. It goes towards all the steps that we're going to take after the survey is, is completed. So the, the first piece there in April, that's already done. Um, I provided the town manager with an update for yeah, his um, town manager's report. And then he put that in one of the last council for one of the last council meetings. Um, so the council has been updated that we're still working on this and, and making progress on the, the residential exemption. 
in the month of May, we envisioned two this? tasks. However, we're, we got delayed a little bit, so um, I'm not sure if these will be completed in May. Um, but the two things, and, and I'm thinking about the order might be a little bit different, is um, one is update the survey, and, and you guys have had some discussions about that. And then the second is obtain feedback from the council on the goals for the report or study. And I wanted to see, I, I imagine we probably want to get feedback from the council on the goals for the for the report before we do the survey, to, just to make sure that the survey covers everything that we need it to cover. But I guess I wanted to stop there and get um, the board's thoughts on that before so we, going to the next steps. So we would need to get on the town council agenda for a meeting, correct? So meeting. I... You know, I was going to talk to the town manager on this one. I was, you know, they've already talked about the the um, the residential exemption back uh, in the last fall. So I was envisioning I may just um, kind of compile feedback from them individually, um, have them email me directly if they had. You know, I was going to give them an outline of the direction we're going and have them email me directly any feedback um, to make it to cover it. If I'll check with Paul to see if that's a okay approach. If not, we might have to get on one of their agendas. In other uh, words, that, that's not an open meeting law violation for you to assemble feedback from counselors, council members? I don't think so. If they are not um, discussing it and between each other, I think, you know, if we're just collecting their feedback individually on things, I mean, you know, we present a budget document and, and they can email us directly thoughts on that. Um, so I, I don't think it's an open meeting law violation, but we'll double check. Um, but I was thinking that would be the quickest way would be to just give them a quick update on where we are and have them individually report to me if they had any um, if they had any specific interests in the study that they wanted to see. You know, one of the ones I know offhand, I think we'll want to discuss is what is the impact on um, rental um, or on apartment complexes? How will that affect rental or rents in town if we were to go with a shifting of the tax base in this way? Um, so that's sort of one specific thing I can imagine we'll want to cover. And we, but there, and we but there may be some, others. So, and we have some scientific way to to measure that impact on rents. I don't think we'll have a scientific way, but I think um, I think that's it's something we're going to have to uh, either reach out to rental complexes and. Um, you know, I'll work with Liz and, and David and see if there's, you know, what ideas they have for, for gauging the impact. I don't, I don't think we'll know for certainty um, and it'll probably be different, uh, you know, among different places. Uh, I guess I just a couple of comments. One is I think David um, zeroed in on what information we're missing. Um, and therefore, it was going to be a targeted, I think, 1,500 surveys to targeted people that we're missing the information on. Okay. So that should be easier than everybody. Yeah. The second thing would be that draft I sent out, the last one I sent to you, Liz, and then I think you sent it on to Sean and everything. The end of the presentation, that's like a three-page thing, that had like five items that other towns have looked at. Mm -hmm when they did this and so that might be something you want to look at sean if you're going to talk to the council members you know it ranges all the way are we all this is redistribution it's not increases in taxes it's simply redistribution of taxes mm -hmm. and what are they trying to achieve there and yep. rentals is part of it how does it affect rentals but also are they trying to help lower income people by making them less taxes for their low income houses or what? I mean, they're broad things that were outlined there. I can't remember them, but there were like five of them. Yeah, I took a look at it, um, Ken, but let me, I'll pull it back up and see, cause you're right, they might be, and, and if we reach out to council, maybe start yeah, with those things and see if there's anything yeah, it's else. A higher, it's a higher level thing Okay. for the council to say, okay, what what's your number one or number two concern about even looking at this? Mm -hmm. um, okay, no, that, that's very good. Um, Good. I'm glad. I, I want you to I, stay. Sorry, my uh, camera is not uh, attached very well. Um, so we will, you know, we're going to do that process, try to get the survey out at the end of May or early June. Um, and I think doing it on the targeted group that we're missing the information makes sense. Um, 
once we get the survey data back and any other information that we need based on um, hearing from the council, I imagine we're going to put together some sort of report um, or some sort of um, recommendation. We'll uh, we'll see what information we get and what direction it goes in once we get the data. Um, but the pieces of that report that I imagine is that we'd want to have sort of the estimated impact data. How will this affect different um, valued homes at different tiers? What, what would they expect to see if we were to go forward with this type of shift? Um, we know we want to talk uh, again to more detail on what it would mean for the assessor's office in terms of um, staff time to implement a program like this. Uh, we would want to lay out some sort of proposed process for community input because it, it, this could have a big um, a big reaction from certain people, positive or negative, um, Very. depending on you know what happens. Um, we'd want to lay out sort of a timeline and implementation because if the council does approve it this fall, you know, that it would really be the next cycle that we would implement this for um, in order to get the applications in and all of that. And then I think the board, based on all of that, would want to decide whether you want to make a recommendation in that report to the council, because that would probably carry some weight with the council if you were, you, you could, either, you don't have to make a recommendation, but if you saw the information and felt really strongly about it, um, you could consider including that in the report. So I think, you know, that piece of work would probably primarily be done by myself, Liz, David, and we would share that information back with you before it's finalized for you. We'd get your thoughts and have you weigh in on it. Um, and Ken, if you want, I know you've been one of the leads on this process. We might want to bring you in when we develop that report as well. Yeah, I'll be happy however you want me to participate, Sean. Summer, summer's pretty bad for me though. But okay. Again, if you do drafts or stuff, I'll be happy to give comments back. Yeah, I think that's what we want to do is probably we'll do some sort of back and forth via drafts. Um, to get to sort of a final draft, which we would review with the Board of Assessors with you all in July. Um, if you guys like it, think it's ready to go, then we would go to the next stage, which would be um, sharing it with the council, going through a community input process, and then ultimately bringing it back to the council for a final decision um, in November or December. Okay, so let me, let me ask, um, I'm a little confused about the, um, the uh, so we would be the town council decision would be this town council or the next town council. Uh, it would be this town council, I believe. I think they don't. Um, I think they don't switch over till January first. I can double check that, but I think so we gonna a, we're going to have a lame duck town council session. Um, I think I don't think there's any way around that because there's some votes that just have to happen in November and December. Oh, I, I, around, I, get, I get that, but yeah. we're going to we're going to have two months of a town council that. Um, is the is this current town council? I think so. I, I'll, like I said, I'll double check the timing, but I believe the you know the election I think is in November, and then the, you know the switchover doesn't happen until January first. Okay, but I'll double I'll double check that, and I can let you know if it's if that's right. not the case. Because that, that makes certainly makes it easier for us if um, if we're dealing with the pat the this town council right because of yeah. continuity. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, Otherwise, we'll have to kind of restart the education process about what this is. So the, so, so the classification hearing is going to be with this town council. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And just to clarify, I think Sean mentioned this, but if they would happen to vote that they go to a residential exemption, it would not apply in January. It would be on the following January before. Yeah, I think, I mean, that would be our, I think, yeah. part of our report is that the, you know, we have to collect the applications to, um, for people that want to participate in the program. I, um, yeah, I just, I think we have to dig in more to what the staff time involvement is, but I think we would have to kind of make it the following cycle um, to do it well. Yeah, that's what, would, that's what other imagine. towns have found big time. They need that time. Okay. I, I would imagine we would get a once, once, it had um, penetrated the community consciousness. It would become, there would be a tidal wave of community input about this. If we, mm -hmm. if there was um, serious discussion about implementing a residential exemption. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think an important piece will be that report and what, you know, however the board um, or the assessor wants to, um, Opine, you know, I think it'll mostly be just data, but there you may want to give some of your thoughts at the end of that report 
um, to, to, you know, because you are the experts on uh, on this area. So they'll, I'm sure the council will rely on some of that for their decision making. So will, will, yeah. the, will this be part of the classification um, process? I mean, will they be integrated together? Uh, yeah. So we talked about that a little bit. I, you know, I'm envisioning that it'll be a sep. It may end up being at the same meeting, um, just trying to group items together, but I've, I think it'll be sort of a separate agenda item from the classification hearing. That'll be its own standalone um, agenda with a pr presentation, and then this would be a separate piece. Okay, so so if this, did, if this did not get nipped in the bud in November, you would have the um, issue of a residential exemption continuing on into the next council with a with a different membership right okay well i i would think it would be it's going to be decided before the classification whether they want to do it or not would be my impression and then on the classification whatever they decided they the classification we're hearing would ride off that if they decided they don't want to do this then the classification would present a recommendation of not doing it would be my you don't want this thing continuing it by itself i don't like no i mean it would be good to have it uh, you know i think it kind of came up i don't know how did it come up last year where this really came up as a big um i think it was a little bit before i started where this it came was the up year a, prior that it was brought to the attention okay of uh or of town council in that meeting and then um there was the changeover between assessors um so when it was brought again to this november's meeting um it was said to be addressed um, the other thing I want to bring to your attention is that the classification is going to be fiscal year 22, correct? John? I, are you asking me? I, I, uh, yeah, I'm so sorry. I want to just clarify. Um, so the classification hearing that we'll have next November will be for fiscal year 22 taxes. Mm -hmm. And based on what you just said, um, we're expecting the applications for the residential exemption if if the council decides to move forward um, would that be for fiscal 22 or would that be fiscal 23 so i would think it would have to be for 23 um, that's that's again, what i'm saying yeah. so really the uh, residential exemption um, should probably not um, be associated with the classification it could, could get confusing because they're two fis different fiscal years and we would yeah. be addressing two different uh tax well, tax rates yeah no i think that's right that we want to keep them separate and, and and be clear about that distinction that's a good point it, it could get confusing if we're doing them two right at the same time okay so i'm i'm confused i'm a little confused now because i thought every year we make it this every year the town council makes a decision about whether it's going to do a split commercial residential rate rates mm -hmm. where they're going to do different uh, split rates and i thought the decision about the residential exemption comes in that hearing also am i wrong that's about a that? different subject i'm afraid yeah. richard there that's where it gets confusing doing them in the same night uh, because you have the split tax rate issue which is a different issue from the residential exemption But that's still because the residential exemption issue is going to be for fiscal year 23, but not I believe, for fiscal year 22. I believe as a matter of state law, they have to decide about a split rate every single year. Isn't that correct? They Sean? do. They do. However, if we're going to present the residential exemption study at that meeting at the same time, um, you're going to be talking about two different fiscal periods. All right. So this timeline, I mean, I, I think this is part of what we'll do in the report as well, as we'll give more thought we'll to, the, it. to the timeline. Not only for community engagement, but also to the timing of when the vote would happen and when it would go into effect. Um, that'll definitely be one of the pieces that we'll have to over the summer, um, so you can weigh in on that more. Okay. But the, I, the split tax rate is a definitely different animal from the residential exemption. Right. I've just my recollection of sitting in on on select board and council meetings in the past is that uh, they come up at the same time. They do. Uh, no yeah, I think the, the I think split this, tax rate. Right. This the split between residential and commercial, I believe, is what you're talking about that has to come up every year. This is sort of a split within the residential um, right. bucket. Within the which, same category. which this is sort of a different um, topic that came up recently. All right. And I would also point out that um, I know we have to do what we do objectively, but my sense is is that the council 
um, there's not a lot of interest on the council, on this current council, of, for, a, for a residential exemption. I think that's a fair characterization of the, of the council right now. Yeah, I haven't heard it um, discussed really since the last time it was sort of officially discussed. Um, you know, I haven't heard it come up in any other agenda or any other meeting. So, um, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure how to characterize that, but I haven't heard anything recently about it. All right. Yeah, I would also say this was not a big thing. The the problem was that it been nothing was addressed because of COVID and a new assessor, and so it was it was we didn't respond to. A, request they did two years ago because of those things and therefore some answer has to be given this year right so i yeah. wouldn't say it's a big thing but it's some answer yeah no the hope is that we can do this report and kind of set the baseline for whatever decision is made and that will serve for some period of time to guide decision making on this and then if it has to be updated again in five or ten years or something that it can be done um you know we're not expecting to make this an annual process so, um, Sean, is there an act? Is there is there an action item that you're looking for for the board today? No, I guess I'm just looking to see if there's sort of general consensus for this approach moving forward. Again, this might um, uh, adjust a little bit a month, you know, a month forward or a month back. Um, but I just wanted to get your feedback, and if I don't hear any, you know, objections to this plan, Liz and I will get started on it. Okay, so let me just let me just say that. Um, uh, having been um, involved with town meeting in the past um, and uh, watching the way the town governs, um, the, the process for community input piece here that you've mentioned for June, that is um, that discussion of how that's going to be done is, uh, I think, very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely right. And then and the nice thing too is we also have some new communication tools that we've been using lately, whether it be with the budget um, or the Pomeroy intersection. We've got some, um, we have Brianna who our communications manager who's is really great at sort of these types of outreach and, and getting sentiment um, from the town. So um, again, when we put together a report, we'll probably have some suggestions for how to do the community input. Um, and then you can weigh in if you think that's sufficient. Sean, do you have any feel when we're going to be able to meet in person again? Um, it seems like it's going to be a while. Um, you know, I think some of it depends on the, the governor's order when, you know, if, if he, if the governor says this is no longer allowed, then that would expedite things pretty quickly. Um, but as long as these types of meetings are allowed, um, I haven't heard anything in the next couple months that we're going to be meeting in person. So not July. I don't anticipate that. Um, at this point. All right. Okay. Just as a, a point of order, I just wanted to apologize for not being able to attend this meeting earlier. Um, I don't know what's up with my computer, honestly. It just doesn't right. want to link up to Zoom. And I will have IT here for our next meeting. So this does not happen again. Okay. Gentlemen, uh, do, you have any, do you have anything you want to say about the, the timeline? No, I'm I'm okay with it. Okay, all right, all right. Is that is that enough? Yeah, from no, that's that's perfect. I appreciate the input you've given so far, and um, like I said, we're gonna we'll start moving forward um with it right away because we want to try to stick to this as close you know as closely as possible. So, if you um, could if you could send us just um a link to this so I can print it out for my records. Yep. Yeah, I'll do that um right after this meeting. And do you have any other questions for us? Um, I don't think so. I guess the only th question is, you know, was there any, you know, we may want to make this a recurring item um, on your monthly meetings, just if we, you know, I, we sure. can let you know if it's needed, but if we do get any input from the council between now and your next meeting, we want to come back to you and, and share that with you and also, um, and, you know, keep you posted as to how the survey is going. So that would be the only thing I'd say is you may want to keep this as a recurring item uh until yeah and we can let you know if it's not needed you can take it off all right and, is, and just as there... a point of clarification just i don't know if i missed it i don't know if i noted it when exactly do we want to send out the survey if at all has that been discussed no so i i, I mean we're going to try to shoot for may 
Um, if we can do it in May, let's do it. The, the one piece is I want to review, um, again, what Ken was talking about with the sort of big items at the end of the, the report he put together, and then see if we want to get feedback from the council first and just make sure that we're on track with the survey, the, da the data that the survey is going to collect, make sure that we don't need any additional data. Okay, so at our last, at our last meeting, we discussed editing it down to just, are you a resident? So are we going back to the survey that had more detail, Ken, just so I understand? I haven't heard any changes to that effect um, yet. Because at our last meeting, we had gotten it down to just one line, are you a resident? Well, I think I, after, I think there was another draft that went out after that, if you can look. You know, there was the first draft that was way too detailed based on what we're doing. Then there was a one-liner draft we agreed on, and then I think I just- That's what I'm saying. That's where we left off, so we're changing that position at this point. Well, I, I look at the draft I sent out after that one-liner, because after we decided we were going to really do the survey for a targeted viewpoint, I don't know. I think, Sean, you and Liz need to decide what information you need. Right. I think, Liz, you've got input from the board on- Oh, they've the given me a marvelous the... amount of, of input okay. for this, this survey. Ken's worked really hard, and so has David. So, right. um, you know, we've got a lot of material. It's a matter of just put, assembling it and make sure we get the questions out to get the the void that we need filled. So, so Liz, Liz, I'll send out that last draft I sent to you after that. Well, one. I have all the drafts. I just want to make sure I have the correct one that we're speaking of. That okay, you want there to should be with. one after the one liner. There should be okay. a draft I sent out after that. Okay. Okay. I'll check for right that. Back. If I don't, I'll call, I'll send you a message and ask for it again. So Sean, is there a, is there a change, is there the opportunity that we might be done with this topic by the end of calendar year 2021? I think that's the goal. Um, yeah, so I think the goal is to be done with the topic. I think, you know, the one way we're not done with the topic is if the council votes to do it. Um, you know, if they if they vote that that's the direction they want to move in, then it'll be a, um, a ongoing topic um, in terms of implementation and then every year going forward. But um, if they vote, the goal is to provide enough data this year for the council to make a decision. If they vote not to do it, um, then it won't come up again until they want to reconsider it in the future. Okay, so I, I would just say, I would just say that um, um, I'm obviously I'm persuadable, but I have a very hard time believing that I would could be that would end up making a recommendation as a one member of this board for an for such an exemption. So I just have okay. a hard time seeing that. But um, and, and you know, I think it has to be made clear, really clear from the very beginning, and that it's a rearrangement of the tax burden not a tax break for not a not a, a huge tax break it's it's simply a rearrangement of the tax burden and right no i totally agree that um you know we'll we'll probably want i don't know if do you guys do you, does the board meet over the summer you still continue to meet over the summer once a month we I will think if, we usually have one month that we don't meet isn't that correct sirs well i think we meet as needed so okay if, right I could see us meeting, um, you know, early July or end of June to review again a draft of that report, make sure, you know, it, it says what the board, you know, I view this as sort of a collaboration um, in terms of the report between the board and, and staff. And so, you know, we we'll want to make sure it's something that we're all on board with, with the, the way it's worded. Well, just, just so you know, then uh, we generally meet the second Thursday. Well, that's what we've been generally doing, but we're flexible. So if you need to see us, um, if we need to move that June meeting back later in the month, Sean, we can do that. Okay. I think. We have to call it a special event. meeting if we deviate from the standard, I think, okay. with the no, town clerk. No, 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 no. We don't have to call it. No, we don't. We, we, we uh, no. arranged meeting, monthly meetings. We don't, we're not obligated to meet monthly, but, um, but um, we can, um, we, we can meet later in June and call that the June meeting if, if uh, Sh Sean, you think that that's um, better. Yeah, I mean, I think the good, so the good the thing is meeting. that, um, is that David and Ken and Liz have done a lot of the legwork already. You know, they've looked at a lot of the numbers and, and we may have to make some updates to those, but a lot of you guys have been talking about it for quite a while. So um, we're not starting from scratch. So I think a lot of the time is gonna be more focused on 
you know, what's the process look like? What's the timeline look like? Um, Liz and I can talk more about how the staffing piece would work if it was to be implemented. Um, I think that's probably gonna take more of the time and, and I think that'll be doable during the month of June. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll, be in, uh, we'll reach out about when we think a good time for that meeting might be. Okay. Uh, just a quick comment on the recommendation. I really don't see it the role of this council to make the recommendation. This is a redistribution of taxes that should be at the council level. Mm -hmm. so I would not, I personally would not make any recommendation one way or another. And I respectfully disagree. I okay. think the assessors are going to have to, are, are going, the principal assessor has made recommendations in the past on this topic. And I expect that the, the principal assessor is going to be asked um, with the support of the board about about this when it comes to the actual decision point. Okay, right. well, that's where we disagree. That's fine. Okay. And, and we may be able to craft those recommendations in a way that are, you know, maybe not a, a, a straight recommendation, yes or no, but are, are more considerations that the council should have based on the data that we pull. Um, you know, we can work on that when we get together to review it. Any other questions on this? Okay, I think we're set. All right, thank you. I'll, I'll probably hang on the meeting, but I'll mute myself. Thank, thank you, you, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Okay. We're going to the uh, motor vehicle abatements next. Okay, can you see my shared screen at this point? Okay, um, I'm trying to make it easy this this time. I'm hoping that uh, we've tagged everything, we've numbered everything, and I've had uh, uh, Teresa on board. We've corrected everything that we can possibly think of. So I'm hoping that this will go very smoothly, gentlemen. Liz, um, can, first... can you can you magnify it a little bit more? I sure can. Uh, let's see, where is my magnifier? There we go. Okay, so the first agenda item is the motor vehicles between April 6th and the 23rd of 2021. And we have, uh, these are all 2021s. There's 32 abatements on this one. There's uh, 19, we had uh, five, um, I'm sorry, 18, we had one abatement. 19, we had five. And for 2020, EAN Holding is uh, otherwise known as Enterprise. Um, so they had quite a few of them here. So that's why 2020 is quite heavy. Um, but our totals page is at the top. And let me just get to that totals page. Teresa tends to, she explained to me that she normally, when she prints these reports, the totals page is usually the signature page. And she puts that on top for our convenience but it does kind of make it a little bit, you know, awkward to read sometimes. So we have a total of 129 motor vehicle abatements between those, those um, fiscal years, 18, 19, 20, and 21. We have a total of uh, 58,973, I mean, yeah, 973 and 39 cents. Um, and that is our reported totals of the excise tax. We're reducing at $28,246.05. Any questions, yes. Any questions, gentlemen? No. Okay, I move that we approve the abatements in the amount of $28,246.05. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And Ken, I, unfortunately, I'm looking at the screen. I'm not looking at your, is Ken waving yes on that? Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, ne next, there's a second set of uh, motor vehicle abatements. Okay, are you seeing this? Would you like me to blow it up further? Thank you. Okay, these are the abatements between April 26 and April 30, 30th, 2021. We only have 14 on this one. And, and Lee, I remember you had mentioned why is this signature on some of them? It's the way that it prints out in the number. Um, we have 14 total abatements. One was in 2020 and, one, and the rest were, 13 of them were in 2021. We have a total of $1,056.79 in tax that we're reducing. Okay. Any questions? 
I move that we approve the uh, for those 14 abatements for one thousand fifty six dollars and seventy nine cents. Excellent. Second. Thank you. Second. All, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 OK. Next in order is the real estate. Let me blow this up for you. These are the abatements that we went over. Um, I did send you all a spreadsheet. Did you all get that spreadsheet? I did. Okay, did, uh, did, did the rest of you gentlemen get the spreadsheet? Yes. Excellent, thank you. Were there any questions about these abatements that were processed? Obviously for each real estate reduction, there's also a CPA charge reduction. So we had a total abatement amount of $284.80 for the CPA charge, $5,880.50 for the real estate, that was residential, and $3,793.28 for the commercial. That's $9,957.96 for those abatements processed. Um, if we go to the bottom of this one, we can show you how many of them were processed. 36 abatements in all, but remember that's two for each one. Okay. So each yeah. one gets a regular assessment adjustment and or a, a tax adjustment, and then it also gets the CPA adjustment in addition to that. And we break out the commercial from the residential, even though it's at it's all taxed at the same rate. Is that right? That's correct. We do have a single rate in, in Amherst, so it is all taxed at the same rate. Now we can see here, um, we did also apply an exemption. So we took off $2,224.52. And that was for the ATM kiosk that was once part of the Newman Center, uh, the Bank of, I think, Bank of America was in that one, and it's now a volleyball court. So they terminated their lease with that bank kiosk and demolished it prior to the tax rate. So that's why that was redu reduced, and that's the one that's there for UMass. Um, the rest were the overvaluations due to the uh, abatements that we processed. Any, any questions? No. Go up to the signature page. This is the totals. Okay, I'm a, I'm a little confused about the difference between the abatement and the refund. I, um, I'm, I guess I'm I'm drawing a blank here. And this would, um, you know what I? It's oh me. Gosh. Do you want me to explain that? Yes, please, Teresa. Thank you. And that's one of the reasons Teresa's here. She's helped me out. Hi, board members. How are you? Hi. Hi, Teresa. Um, that's, you know, after the abatement, that's what people overpaid. So they're going to be getting refunds of that amount. So okay. they, over, they overpaid it. See, these were done after they paid everything. So we did the adjustment and so they're entitled to a refund. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and I just want to ask you guys one question. Would you guys prefer the signature page to be on the back rather than the front of the reports? Uh, does it make a difference? Um, it doesn't make a difference to me. I just want to make it easier for you guys to read it. Does it make a difference for the public? It might only because um, this is page seven. Now, sometimes these reports have uh, people that are also in the abatement sequence. So it's not always alone by itself. In other words, this is page one, this is page two, this is page three. Sometimes some of these would be on the signature page. So it would flip from seven up to one. So it might be best to just leave it in the order that it's printed. But it's up to you gentlemen, really. Uh, that's fine with me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You got it. Bye. Thank you, Teresa. I appreciate the clarification too. All no right. Problem. I move to approve those real estate that uh, those real estate abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Next on the agenda is the personal property. We have a total of. 
two that we went to, um, bio in a row. My French is not the greatest. I will inflate this so that you can also maybe say it better than I do. Is that Bio Moreau Incorporated at lab equipment over at the UMass uh, Laboratories on University Drive, and they uh, have transferred those assets to the Commonwealth to UMass University. Liz, so, I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt. Remember that. That oh one, no, I'm sorry. That was the one that we added and we removed. That's removed. Right. So yeah. that is not even that yeah. was We're gonna abated just in error. This one. Yeah. This one was abated in error. So um I had asked Teresa before the meeting why it was a um a minus and then a plus. So this one we can disregard. I think David and I are gonna do a little more investigating on this one before we decide whether we're gonna abate it or not. Because the laboratory equipment was owned by uh Bio Moreau. And then they counted it as retired. Um, so I investigated with the lease company. And in fact, the lease company did say that it went to, to UMass. We just want to confirm the date as to when that happened. Um, we're going on to the Atkins fruit basket or fruit bowl. This was the North Amherst that you abated last month um, in the appeals. And that was, of course, uh, it's now another store over in that North, Ham North Amherst Square district where the new apartments are. Um, it was uh, on the W.D. Coles land. This is um, My Eye Doctor Optometry of Mass PC. We had two accounts. This is a, uh, a cleanup. We had a duplicate account of the same doctor. So we were moving one of them. So we have a total of $2,391.47 that was uh, recommended to be abated or was abated. And really that's only for Atkins and my eye doctor. So is that a, that's a different number now, isn't it? Pardon me? No, it's the same because this is a minus and this is a plus, it put it back, right. but we're obliged to share it with you okay. right. because the action was taken. But we will revisit Biomet Bio Moreau. That will be revisited in another meeting. Any questions? No. Questions, Ken? No. no. Okay. Uh, I move that we approve that uh, the that uh, the personal property abatements presented today. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, this almost looks too big. All right, let me explain this a little bit because uh, you need a little bit of detail with this. This, of course, is our new, hotel, our new um, apartments that are at 408 Northampton Road. That's the Aspen Heights Apartments. Uh, when we went out to uh, appraise this property, it was under construction. And they, um, when we put in the square footage, the square footage was only put in for the first floor. We're adding the second floor, and that's what this, uh, this additional tax is for. Is, is this the... Um the construction site that's um, that the corner of Northampton Road and uh, Snell Street. This is the one that is um, right. right where the old motel used to be on North uh, Northampton Road or Route Nine. Um, it's not not far from. Uh, it's not, it's right in front of Evergreen. It's almost part of Evergreen. Okay. Those condominiums there. Okay. Um, I can certainly bring you up the the site if you would like me to. Right. It's all right. I even have a picture, but um, it should add quite a bit to our tax rolls when it's complete. Okay. We have a tax amount of one thousand fourteen dollars, and I'm sorry, one hundred and fourteen thousand seven hundred eighty-eight dollars and forty-seven cents. We also have a CPA of three thousand four hundred forty-three dollars and sixty-five cents. Any questions? It's ten thousand, right? Liz, ten thousand nine ninety-seven thirty-three. For this one, where I don't see ten thousand. Lee, I think you're looking at the um, the supplemental one. 
You should oh, that's yeah. a CPA. the revised yeah. one. Yeah, okay. that's the revised CPA. Okay. So yeah, 114, 788, 47 is the actual tax. Okay, got it. Lee, are you following? Yeah, okay, we jumped down the one. Yep, okay. All right. And we, we have not taken the vote at this time. Are we voting on this one yet? Okay, I move that we approve that supplemental tax warrant and notice to commit. But I don't see that number 114 on the agenda. It's the one below, we, we jumped one, Ken. I see 112, 158. That, that's a previous uh, uh, well, agenda. We'll be getting to that one. Lee, we'll, no, we'll Lee, I'm sorry. Lee, I sent out, not Lee, I'm sorry, um, Ken. Okay. I accidentally sent out the incorrect one and I resent okay. the updated one. And um, I right. could have sworn I sent it to you, but if I didn't, I'm, I apologize. No, you probably did. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, I caught I caught the correction. And I think that might be the first mistake Teresa's ever made. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I so. don't know. I don't know about that, but thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh gentlemen, just by the way, you might want to wish her a happy birthday. Is that is that today, Teresa? Uh, You're muted, Teresa. Oops, sorry. It is. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Th thank yeah. you. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. And thank you for deciding to spend your birthday with us. <laughs> and just so you, you know, I, I truly enjoy working with Teresa. She is my right arm and uh, a pleasure to work with. Thank you. Welcome, Teresa. You deserve it. Okay. I, I move that we approve that uh, that warrant along with the notice uh, notice of, it's a notice of commitment, right? No, I forget the. the Yes, it is a notice of commitment. Okay. So this okay. is a tax warrant and notice of commitment. And unfortunately, that was really our fifth agenda item, and I'm moving it to the fourth. All right. Any questions, gentlemen, about that? No. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And this, of course, was our fifth agenda item. I'm moving. It's the, um, doing backwards. Sorry. This is the supplemental tax. Um, this is for the incomplete construction that um, we had property that was not complete as of June, but it was at least 50% complete. Um, so we tax for the difference at this time of the year. We have until the end of June to tax for the difference of the completed structure once we get a certificate of occupancy. Um, the real estate tax is $10,997.33 additional. So this, and the CPA tax is $330.82. And as I said, it's flipped on your, on your agenda. So this is the same property? No, this is, um, yes. Yes, this is the same property. Okay. No, these are not the same property. Now, these are not the same property. These are for other properties that we had that were um, completed that we recently processed. I think there was, I think there was three parcels yeah. there and I, I apologize, I didn't send the, the list, the list because David wanted me to get that on the, um, get those out and I didn't have the list prepared yet. So, so these are three properties with construction going on on them. Yes, they had at least 50% of their property uh, complete as of last June 2020. And we have under law um, the, the obligation to issue a supplemental tax. In other words, they, they were occupying the home as a such and such date. And we prorate it to the date that they occupied the home and tax them to the end of the tax period which is of course the fiscal year. So the, so the construction is completed now? Yes, it is. And this is the difference between the two because they didn't have that structure completed for the entire fiscal period. So they had it, the percentage that was done as of June. And then this is a supplemental tax, which is the difference for the number of days between the date they got their CO and the end of the tax period. So for this one part, part, part of this new construction process, they're receiving two tax bills for the same fiscal period, one for the incomplete 
uh, portion of the structure as of June 2020, and one for the difference from the date they occupied or received a certificate of occupancy from inspection services to the end of the tax year. And that's what this is. Yes, it is. But these are these are three separate parcels, and but they haven't been identified for us. Is that right? Um, they they are not identified, and I do have them handy if you would like me to look them up. I didn't realize they weren't incorporated. I, I can get the I can get them for you if you want. Would you please, Teresa? Yep. That would be great. Hold on. Normally, that way, at least the gentleman can see um, which properties are affected by this change. Yep. Do we vote having the parcels identified for us? Yes. Okay. So Teresa is um, going to give me that identification. I actually um, started processing the letters for these to go out to the taxpayers. Um, so I'm well aware of which ones have the uh, prorate for taxes. I might be able to bring it up for you here. Let me see for a second, please bear with me. Actually, supple tax, I believe, is what we parked it under. Well, I'll let Teresa take care of that part so that we can move on. Can we um, maybe move on to the next, which is the lien release, and then we'll revisit that so that we can sure. identify those parcels? Sure. Does that sound reasonable, gentlemen? Sure. Okay. So we will um, revisit this when Teresa gives me that list of the parcels involved. And let's see here. This is the lien release um, for the Hool property. Um, it was transferred a portion of it from the uh, Chapter 61. It was only 0.62 acres that the Hool family had. Um, they did it back in 2013. And when an attorney was doing a title search for Miss Riley, who has the parcel that it was merged with, um, he wanted us to release the lien that was not released um, at the time that it was transferred to Miss Riley in 2013. Um, and on, for your convenience, I have the, um, this is the, the parcel it's being merged to. And uh, you can see that it came out of the parcel that Mr. Hool had. Um, it is APR land. And we also have a picture. Let me bring up the picture of this parcel for you. Yeah, those are the three that supple. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Teresa just got, brought me that other information we were looking for, gentlemen. Okay. I um, uh, don't know if you can see, let me make sure I'm getting this one. Can you see this parcel that I'm bringing up? Not yet. Not yet. So let me make sure this screen sharing is working. New share. Okay. If you see these dotted lines, this is the parcel that was originally for that um, parcel known as 20D47, um, also known as, um, what was that parcel I just had up? I'm sorry. This is the parcel in question. It's on Southeast Street. Okay. It, it is a, a 20B4084. Um, let's see. Actually. But basically what happened was they added from, they expanded the, bot, the envelope of the parcel. And this is now called 20B85, because this is where it came out of the surrounding parcel. So they, they, the original envelope was only 100 by 100. And then they added 0.6, Get this for you right correctly. 0.62 acres. At the time, this was identified as uh, 21C3 because it was a larger lot. After it was 
separated and regrouped, they changed it to 20B85. That gets, 80, that gets confusing and it's probably not necessary to share with you, but I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Are there any questions? Gentlemen, are you following this? Yeah, I think I know where that is. It's, it's uh, um, south of the, the common. Correct. Um, and there's one entrance for three different. There's actually two entrances to this property. Yeah, now I see it. I didn't know that yeah. before. There's the oh, mailbox. There's a, there's a common driveway? Yeah. Yes, yes. There's a common driveway that reaches back into parcel 20B85. OK. And I remember seeing the three mailboxes by that <laughs> common entrance. And attorney Robert Spencer brought this to our attention April 28th. Uh, in an email, he said, I am representing Margaret Riley in the refinancing of her property at 908 Southeast Street, um, which shows lot one on the attached uh, parcel 20D47. As you see, that's, that's this here um, on the assessor's map. Lot one was created in 2016 by expanding a existing 100 by 100 residential area to 37,108 square feet. A uh, lot now shown as parcel 20D47. So I wanted to make sure I understood, I gave you the translation of how these parcel numbers change as we move these parcels and, and um, merge and separate. So when we have an initial uh, parcel, it's gonna have a lower number. This 100 by 100 parcel probably had a lower number. Um, when we subdivide a lot, they get larger numbers, they get higher numbers, they get a new number assigned, if, I, if you will. But uh, in essence, this should have been done in 2013. Uh, unfortunately, there was an oversight and it was not released at the time in 2013. No one was overtaxed. It was just a, a matter of cleanup on the land records at the Hampshire County Registry. Okay, so we're essentially doing a, a record keeping. Um... This is a record keeping message. Yes, to the Hampshire records to say that um, Mr. Houle's family is not responsible for that 0.62 acres that was transferred to the Riley property. Okay, I move that we approve this release of, of uh, tax lien. Second. Good. All, right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Now we have to double back to the um, the commitment. To the okay, um, and Teresa was good enough to give me the commitments at, that were in question. And of course, I just buried them in my paperwork. Okay, the first on the agenda is Apple Brook West LLC. Um, it has since transferred to a new owner, but they were the owner as of January. Um, this property uh, was more than 50% complete, and we have completed its um, full value. And uh, just like the other parcel, it's getting a percentage of tax for when they occupied the property to the end of the tax cycle. So this is like a second bill for the completed structure, but only for a portion of the tax cycle, which is of course the fiscal year. And where is the property? This property is 19 Vista Terrace, South Amherst. Okay, all right. I believe it's off of Bay Road, isn't it? The next one is a property owned by, oh boy, I hope I can say this correct. I Maybe I'll spell it for you. It's G-Y-A-L-T-S-E-N, Yeltsin, maybe? I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly. Um, Dolkar and Yashi, uh, they are at 1380 Southeast Street. And they too had a supplemental bill for a completed uh, new construction. Okay. The last one is Historic Reserva Renovations and Rental Property Incorporated. 
It's at Seven P's Place. And there again, he had a new construction that was completed within the, within the uh, tax cycle. So this will issue a second supplemental bill for the completed structure to the end of the tax cycle. Okay. Are there any questions? Any questions? No. I move that we approve the um, this this particular um, supplemental um, tax warrant with the notice of commitment uh, for those three parcels just mentioned. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Excellent. Are these next items the all in an executive session? Um, were we going to make the discussion of the solar agreements? Is it on the agenda? Um, it was a late addition to the agenda. Okay, well, late means not within the 48, not with the 48 hours notice. Yes, we do have it on within the 48 hours. Okay. Okay. Um, um, so, uh, this is okay. So let me bring up what I have for you. So can, um, just, can I just add, is there an action item that's that's associated with this? Is there something that we're going to we're going to uh, take some action on today? No, sir. Um, the um, the only thing that we're going to be taking an action on is something that we're going to uh, address in executive session that's for um, the personal property abatement of leased uh, solar panels to a residence or to residential homes um, that's eligible under uh, chapter 59 five clause 40 um, it's, yeah 59 five clause 45 and that gives them a 20 year exemption for those solar panels. Um, normally we exempted it, it was a, a Scrivener's error not to exempt it. We did exempt the rest of those um, and uh, we, we just left one of them out. So it was postponed to this meeting. Um, but I was asked if I could um, bring up our uh, solar installations and the pilots that we had assigned. Um, so I, I do have that assembled if you'd like to see it. I guess the general, this is great, Liz. Uh, I'm sorry if I asked too much detail. I didn't mean, I was looking for a high overview, but this is great. Um, the question, does this have to be executive session? This doesn't have to be executive at all. I didn't expect it to be. Okay. Yeah. Does the vote on the, whatever we're voting action take, does that have to be executive? This, there is no vote I, that, that's really being done on this. This is just a disclosure of the solar agreements that we have. No, I, I mean, the one action thing we have to do, you said we have to do an executive session? Yes, because it is a, um, a, a application for abatement, yeah. and those are right on the application. As, Ken, as, as uh, David has pointed out on, to me on many occasions, that um, those applications for abatement are considered uh, confidential. Okay. Yeah. So right. well, it doesn't really have anything confidential on it. Okay. Um, because the application itself does say confidential, we should probably maintain that confidentiality. But that's okay. the only thing I have in the. Um, no, I have two actually. We have a personal exemption for uh, exec executive session. As well. Okay, Rich. I'm happy. However, you want to do it. Well, um, is there some? Uh, this is apparently um, some uh, in response to an inquiry that you made. Yeah, it was educational for what solar is going on in Amherst. Okay, um, all right. Uh, and so, uh, Rich, I'm getting close to time. So, and Ken, if you wouldn't mind, if we could delay the discussion sure. until next meeting. All That's right. Fine. That's okay. fine. And um, uh, just for the for the purposes of uh, before we we're going to go into executive session and not come back. So um, I'd like to discuss uh, the next uh, meeting date. Excellent. Um, I'm going to suggest um, June 10th. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Same, ta same time. Okay, right? Ken. Yeah, that's fine. June 10th at 11 a.m. 
All right. Um, so, gentlemen, uh, given the, given the, um, I'm, I'm asking um, that you approve uh, our going into executive session now to address a couple, uh, a couple of matters: a personal exemption and a, uh, and a, and a, a, I guess, a set of abatements. Is that correct? A personal property abatement and a uh, personal exemption request. Okay. All right. All okay. right. All in favor of going into executive session, please say aye. Aye. Okay, what we have to do is is to actually uh, exit and go back exit in. and then go back in based on the uh, emailed address. All right, Ken, and we're going you, into executive session at 1216. Do we agree on that time, sir? Yeah, uh, Ken, do you do you have access to your email to be able to do this? I can't hear him. Uh, you're you're presently um, muted, Ken. I should be able to I sent it to my in-laws email but if not just, right. go, just go ahead without me if all right we'll we'll wait for you for about three or four minutes and then we'll go ahead if we keep yeah. you don't show up okay that's fine all right thank, thank you thank I'm you i'm going to stop recording now okay right. adjourned okay i'll meet you on the executive side